saying my surname. So my name is Julia, A-N-T-I-G-U-E-D-A-D. -D. Now does anyone want to have a go at uh, pronouncing that one? Antigua. Alphabet? Oh, close enough. <laughs> it's actually pronounced Antigua. And like David, I'm also Spanish. Who would guess? There's eight of us and two of us are Spanish. Um, but I'm lucky, I actually grew up speaking both Spanish and English, um, unlike my husband. So he arrived uh, in his late 30s, thinking he could actually speak a bit of English. So we've, we've got to immigration and he's there in his best English thinking, talking to himself, thinking, good morning, how are you? We arrived at the, at the front of the, of the line and the immigration guy looks at him and says, g'day mate, how are you going? And he's looked at me with panic. Holy fuck, they don't speak Spanish. They don't speak English either. They speak Australian. Anyway, his English in the last 14 years has improved. Um, although he still makes uh, a few mistakes. And his English is, well, it's, it's still crap. Um, so the common, the common one is kitchen and chicken. So, <laughs> Doug is laughing down here. So, um, it's, it's quite funny because he'll be, he'll be, he'll be there in the lounge and he goes, do you want anything from the chicken? Uh -huh. Yeah, sure, an egg. Um, and, and you think you'd get it right because he spent the first three months working as a as a kitchen a chicken hand in, in a restaurant. And then there was this um, this one night uh, that we were driving all the way to Ararat, and we had a couple of hours to kill. So we were trying to explain the difference between the following words. So it was fog, frog, frock, fox, fuck and fork. I could not get it. So the next time you are standing next to a cute Spanish guy and he asks you for a fork, he's probably looking for a, a utensil to eat with. Okay? <laughs> so anyway, there's lots of them. Last well Sunday... Done, Julie, well done. Thank you, Kat. Last, last Sunday he goes, Sweetie, when we've done the shit, I'm going to go down the beach. Okay, so you really, you, you really can stretch your vowels out. You know, it's sheet and it's beach. It's like common, common mistakes, common mistakes. Um, the other one is he's turned up at clients' houses on the wrong day because he gets Tuesday and Thursday mixed up. So anyway, he's decided to rework the week. So we've got Monday, the day after Monday, Wednesday, the day after Wednesday, and Friday. Problem solved. Uh, we had some friends, some Spanish friends over for dinner the other night and she's a hairdresser and uh, she was telling us that she'd spent three weeks working before her manager pulled her aside and said, you really need to offer a blow wave and not a blow job. <laughs> business had never been better. <laughs> oh, oh, this one of my favourite. They're my other favourite. So you know how we say Coca-Cola or Coke for short? Well, in Spanish it would be pronounced Coca-Cola, one large cock <laughs> with ice. <laughs> but listen, we're not alone because when, when we go over to Spain, when I say we, English speakers, when we go to Spain, people in restaurant business get, get a bit of a giggle when people get pollo and polla mixed up. Now, pollo is chicken and polla is dick. <laughs> but don't they say that everything tastes like chicken? <laughs> doing here and of course I did come here because Double DB, my good friend Double DB, um, talked me into it for somehow and I thought yeah okay. So last year B had a significant birthday and she um, had a year of yes. So sorry boys, you're too late. <laughs> flat on my face yeah, that's okay. and that's, uh, except, uh, look honey with those airbags even with a nose like Pinocchio you're not going to fall flat on your face so I, I've, I've got a bit of a thing about these boobs 
Um, not, not in the, exactly, not in the, you know, car, show us your tits kind of way, but in the, you have got a really nice perky bear pair of girls. You know, they're, you could admire them. And when I told her that I was actually going to be using her breasts in part of my routine, she was like, I don't think we both can do it. I said, well, there's a lot of material there. <laughs> them before B. They arrived two seconds earlier. Uh, and the other day she had to go back to the dock. So she's walked in and he said, okay, two big breaths. And she goes, yes, but I'm here about my knee. Anyway, um, oh, quick question, quick question. Does anyone know the colour of B's eyes? Point made. <laughs> But once you get past the 50 and you turn 51, it's easy. You think, hey, there's some positives here. Don't give a fuck anymore. The red hair, it's fake. But it takes to the greys really well, so it's instant highlights. How's that? I've put on 10 kilos, which means that I'm into minimalisation at the moment, so my wardrobe has been decimated. In fact, I've had to go commando tonight. <laughs> but, but the best thing... The hair on your leg, legs, and this is something to look forward to for the young ones, the hairs on your legs grow much slower, which is great because you've got heaps more time to pluck these black fuckers <laughs> out of your chins. Thank you, everyone.